Hi guys, welcome to the video and welcome to this BC. This is the Piper PA44 Seminole. It's by Carinado and it's for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and that's what we're going to be having a look at today in terms of a review. Now with time on tradition what we're going to do is look at the outside, the inside and we'll take it for a flight and see what we think. Now it's notable because this is the first payware add-on twin we've had for the simulator. So I guess you could consider that it's a good point to compare uh, payware against the default aircraft in the sim. Now obviously being a twin engine it does handle different to a single engine aircraft and there's a couple of things we'll have a look at as we go through. But this aircraft does hold some specific appeal for me. The flight school where I did my commercial pilot's license and my multi-rating had one of these aircraft and it was their instrument trainer. So I thought oh you know great I'm going to get to have a goal and go in the Seminole. But unfortunately, between me uh, starting my CPL and actually getting to the multi-engine part of it, uh, they stopped using this and they used the Diamond DA42s instead. Which is a real shame because this was uh, absolutely brand new, zero hours on the clock, when the company took it on and it ended up being used as a, an air taxi for ferry and crew and staff around. And I remember looking at it thinking, that is one sweet aircraft, I'd love to fly that, uh, but sadly never to be. Now as we'll see in the cockpit, it's fairly old school with the panel, steam gauges etc as opposed to the nice widescreen tellies you get in a lot of modern aircraft. Uh, it makes it nice and interesting to fly and if you're going to fly it in uh, IMC, Instrument Meteorological Conditions, then you do need to have a, a fairly decent and it's quite old school in that respect. There's also a couple of old school instruments in there such as an RBI, Relative Bearing Indicator. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to mention a couple of bits about twins. Uh, the first thing is uh, contra-rotating props on this twin. Now, not, a, not all twins have contra-rotating props. Uh, contra-rotating props mean that they turn in opposite directions. So, for example, uh, this one turns in a clockwise direction when viewed from the front. This one turns in an anti-clockwise direction. I'm not going to go into the aerodynamics of it, but basically what that means is there's no such thing as a critical engine in this aircraft. But it also means, in effect, there's a lot of the engine internals are actually reversed. So the engine itself is its not just a gearing thing, the engine itself is turning in the opposite direction. Now in terms of uh, twin engine props, one of the things to, uh, to be aware of is that if you lose an engine in an aircraft like this, I mean the engines are only 130 horsepower and it's quite a, a hefty thing to lump, to lug around. But if you imagine if you have one dead engine and you go from 260 horsepower to 130, then you lose an awful lot of performance and some of these aircraft will struggle to climb single engine at you know 100 to 200 feet per minute and it's not completely unheard of for an aircraft to struggle to climb at all uh, single engine particularly if heavily laden so we'll have a look at that in the flight okay so the 3d modeling and uh, there's actually an old adage in flight that if it looks right it'll fly right and this to me looks very very nice it's a conventional layout, but the way it's been modelled is superb. So you can see where the curves are. There's no uh, jaggy straight edges or nothing like that. Uh, the fillet area around where the main uh, wing surface is joined. The fuselage is nice and crisp and smooth. The engine nacelles, the they're, they're nice and uh, crisp. They've got complex curves around where the air intakes are, which are very nicely done. The spinners are beautiful in terms of their rendition and their shape. And again, the props are very nice, crisp edges to them. Lovely curves for the aerodynamic surfaces in terms of the wings and the stabilator at the back. It hasn't got elevators, the whole thing, uh, it's like a fly, whole flying tailplane. Uh, we'll get to see that in a bit. But the other thing to notice is uh, a combination of the lighting and the textures. Uh, areas where it's smooth look absolutely brilliant, have lovely reflective effects. We'll have a look at those as we go round. And you can see there's different sorts of textures, so where the uh, instrument panel is, you've got this kind of uh, mottled -y, uh, black and dark grey sort of surface here. What we'll do is just quickly have a, a, a different look from a different angle. Now you can see it can get really quite close in and you can see beautiful uh, curvatures here, really nicely done. I do like the, uh, the lights on the end of the wing, they look absolutely great. Likewise the landing light here and this little vein, this, uh, this aerodynamic vein, looks brilliant. And that's continued down uh, the whole of the wing and uh, I think if, uh, if you took a still of this you'd be hard pushed if you showed somebody to uh, convince them it's not a real aircraft. Uh, the scenery obviously uh, would be a, a bit of a giveaway but uh, in terms of the actual airframe of the aircraft it looks really, really brilliant, and I think uh, they're making the most of 
the modeling uh, capabilities of the sim and again you can see in terms of lighting here where this uh, this area is it's not entirely flat gloss and you can see it's got this kind of uh, sort of wishy-washy effect for the lighting really really good now it's easy to forget the underside of the model and uh, again we see continued 3d modeling to a very high level of detail here let's just see if we can scoot in a little bit closer it's probably closer than i was intending but let's have a look up like this and you can see the undercarriage leg with the chrome of the oleos a little bit of a flicker here but nothing too uh, too significant uh, the actuators or the uh, the linkages here for the undercarriage doors and then and aesthetically the whole thing is very very nice uh, something that i particularly like and it's just you know one of those things people have uh, different things but the grubby uh, well used wheel well is uh, fantastic so uh, the undercarriage well is just brilliant and again as if you continue round you can see the the well used underside uh, with the, the streaking and obviously it's an area with a plane that doesn't get quite as much attention in terms of cleaning and likewise nicely modeled 3d cowl flap here uh, you can see some of the oil staining around and the exhaust stubs are lovely but i think you'd have to say it's superb and again you can see nice attention to detail with the, the lovely section of the fillet down here a very complex piece to model and uh, a lot of developers don't do a particularly great job it's something worth looking at if you look at uh, modeling uh, step over here is nicely done and obviously being a piper it's got that rather unique characteristic of only uh, one side has a door now again this is uh, the lighting's not showing it to its best here but this is a, a sort of a daply matte dark gray color uh, which is the anti-slip walkway to get up into the aircraft but the rest of it you can see the sheer gloss shine of the panel work but once we get inside we'll see a different aspect of the 3d modeling that uh, i absolutely adore it's not something that i've seen done to this level or to as well as this uh, level as demonstrated by this uh, this add-on so without further ado let's jump inside so as you join me inside you can see I've set the time slightly differently because I want to demonstrate some of the elements of the uh, the, the graphics in terms of the imagery the aesthetics etc now the first thing I'll point out before we start chucking lights on is the kind of different chrome effect here from the lighting really really nicely done now I'm just going to get rid of the oaks so that we get a better view of the panel but what i want to do is come over here and have a look at this aluminium aircraft unlike composite aircraft generally always have some sort of dings or ripples in the surface particularly where there might be uh, underlying spars or ribs that the wing surface is attached to or where it just picks up hangar rash where things get uh, bumped into knocked into and so what we've got here is a really really lovely aesthetic for it in terms of the 3d modeling for the ripples and bumps and also the lighting the way it comes over and it really really is fantastic to look at uh, likewise in terms of the engine uh, cowlings really nice you can see the the ripples around here and down here and around here really really nicely done and if you zoom quite close in you can see that uh, there's a very very good effect of things not being quite as flush a sort of depression of one of the fixings there i think they're more obvious here in terms of uh, where the fixings are pulling the the cowling in and down here as well you can see you can get quite close and the screw heads are still uh, obvious although some of the texturing is just starting to lose uh, the clarity but the paintwork is crystal clear absolutely beautiful uh, have no qualms whatsoever about it and the 3d modeling just goes to uh, next level with this area here with the complexity of the curves of this uh, this fairing this uh, filleting around here uh, and again different levels in terms of here's your cover for the uh, leading edge and then here's your main uh, wing surface again different reflective natures to them different lighting uh, different sort of materials because these tend to be uh, more plasticky whereas this is aluminium but really really nice now at this point it's kind of a bit like MC Hammer you can't touch this there's uh, three areas that I'm aware of but I've had a quite a few uh, crashes to desktops where I wasn't really aware as to what was happening um, there are some bugs in here and they're to do with the cockpit animations that I can see you can't touch this because if you click that despite the nice enticing hand you won't open the window you'll crash to desktop uh, you can't change the sun visors because uh, the nice enticing hand is saying crash 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 and likewise this door handle so you can't see what any of these animations are like at the moment uh, now i know that uh, there's been mention of the forums and i'm quite sure that carinado are aware of it but obviously carinado are dependent on uh, msfs uh, sobo however you want to consider it to actually upload any uh, fixes 
or patches they do. Now looking around the cockpit itself, the 3D modelling is fantastic in terms of things like the pedals, uh, the handheld microphone which is very old school, uh, the, the throttle quadrant is very nicely done, door pockets, uh, handholds, the seats are just a work of art, you know, that looks real worldy to me. Uh, likewise, you know, the, the thread, the stitching and the, the joining of the leather panels and the seatbelt is just amazing. Look at that. You know, that. you look at that and that's true to life, really, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I like it where there's a light amount of wear and tear to a, a, an aircraft because these things uh, obviously do get used. And so you've got some lovely texturing and uh, dirt around the floor panels here and you've got light use of uh, the instrument panel you can see it's slightly darker here and here etc and likewise if you go over here the uh, the 3d map pocket etc is just great grubby seats and more importantly because there's only one door on a uh, PA44 uh, everyone gets in and out the same doors so obviously with regards to that it tends to be a little bit grubbier than the other side which this one is very very nice indeed so popping back here what we now need to do is look at the panel and what we're going to do before we look at the panel is just going to pop down here pop the battery master on I don't know why but it always uh, starts with the strobe lights on for default which uh, we're not interested in we don't want to blind people albeit it's fake and therefore we don't really give a damn really uh, but what we're going to do now is just look at the instruments and I'll just zoom out a bit these things here are P lights so apart from these two instruments uh, and the engine instruments down here your main instruments around here are not backlit so they've got these little things called P lights and these are basically like little floodlights uh, I remember them being in the Sea King I'm sure they were in the Sea King in the in the the cockpit at the front as opposed to in the rear crew area but uh, switch lights are for these little plasticky switches and you can turn them on and vary the intensity and I think you'd have to agree it does look like there's some sort of little light bulb in the back of those very very nice indeed and then the panel lights are for the P lights and you can just see they're, they're superb now obviously one of the things is it's got kind of a floodlight effect so the P light is here and it's kind of got the light here cascading over the instrument same thing on this side and then some of the instruments like here they've got two so they've got the, the two effects that's got two that's got one and it's kind of got this uh, this uh, I don't know it's not really a reflection but this lighting of the bezel on the opposite side uh, really really nicely done absolutely love it the way they've done the P lights and if you notice as well if you've ever been in a, a, a piper where they use these gauges I think most pipers do the lighting is from the bottom of the gauge so they've got that here with it kind of flooding upwards from a, a little lamp at the bottom you can see the the slightly increased uh, light element down in the bottom corners so the, for me absolutely nailed it with the cockpit lighting uh, these lights up here although you've got oil warning light uh, you've only got one for the two engines in reality if you've got an oil problem with one engine uh, it doesn't matter whether it's one or two you've got an oil problem single alternator despite two engines low bus bar voltage because obviously we've got no power on gear warning horn that's something to be very cautious of if you're doing uh, things like stalls because quite often you'll turn the gear warning horn off because it's really irritating but if you don't turn it back on before you land there could be and there have historically been issues with that but I think you'd have to agree with me that the overall 3D modelling is superb now because it's not a study level aircraft things like the circuit breakers aren't actually active and there's a couple of concessions in things like the the GPS now I wouldn't say it's again it's study level by any stretch of the imagination but for most people it's going to be uh, well more than adequate it's, it's quite a nice rendition of it however what we need to do is turn some more stuff on there's that stupid parking brake that the tow brakes should be able to turn the parking brake off and if you operate that you can see it actually moves the tow brakes but yet yeah, as a pilot you can't do anything so bugs me bugs the hell out of me but that's sim as opposed to uh, Carinado the the sim encoding or the sim coding I should say uh, it that's just how it works and uh, obviously the, they've not used a workaround for it now you need to set up uh, a way to slew or translate around the cockpit because your fuel controls are down here so let me see if I can uh, remember which which button it is that's the one let's pop them up 
If you want to uh, do cross feeds, you put them down. If you want to use them normally, you put them up. And in this middle is off. Let's reset the camera. I'll just make mention of the uh, handbrake. Not a handbrake, this is your flap lever, common to a lot of pipers. Uh, so you don't need to worry about having electrics or any anything else in terms of flap operation. It's uh, absolutely uh, completely 100% manual. Now, because it's not uh, study level, we don't need to get too carried away, but we will need mixture on, fuel on. I'll just quickly mention as well down here, cow flaps, because of uh, the temperature buildup that you get at slow speed, high power settings, uh, you want the cow flaps open for uh, takeoff. Now, obviously the issue here is we can't see the other one. So let's just scoot over to this side of the cockpit. And in fact, we're gonna have to lower ourselves a little bit, are we? Yeah quite a long way down to see the other one. That's not a problem with uh, Carinado representing the sim, that's just in real life. Uh, obviously one of the things with ergonomics in an aircraft is quite a lot of the time you'll find that controls have a different shape so that even in the darkness you can figure out what you're uh, using. So that's why there's like these octagonal mixture levers, that's why you've got this strange like castle top uh, prop levers. Obviously your throttle levers are just as throttle levers are, there's nothing uh, significantly different about those to normal. Just crack them open for starting. And then the flower, cowl flaps are just spheres. So obviously it can't be confused with anything else. Uh, carb heat is here. Carb heat, it's all or nothing in a, a piston engined aircraft. Uh, you don't have half carb heat, you don't have three quarters. It's all or nothing. Uh, we obviously want them off for takeoff at the moment so that we have maximum power. Coming back to the main panel, what we can start to do is play around with our switcheroonies. Um, because it's not uh, study level, we're not going to break anything. Do need the fuel pumps. Fuel pressure goes instantly, snaps to it when it goes on, but it does kind of have this gradual decrease. But uh, yeah, so fuel's on, everything's on, everything's on. Just open all of these up. These are the plastic covers to stop you operating the magnetos. We obviously need those on. And then what we'll do is we'll start the right engine first. I would normally hold them on the tow brakes because parking brakes aren't always that reliable. Uh, but we'll give it three squirts on the primer. And there we go. Oil pressure's up within 30 seconds. Into the green. Everything else is looking good. Nothing to scare us. One, two, three. Left one start. Again, exactly the same. Everything's good. Electrics are good. Oil's good. Close all those off. Now we have to come over here and start turning gadgets on. So, go, go, gadget lights. Don't really care about the fact that we might have somebody outside. It's sim land. This and this switch aren't animated, don't operate anything. Uh, this one's worth being, being aware of. Uh, this is your flight director, autopilot master. Central position is flight director which it automatically comes on and there's uh, an annunciator when the system's on that comes up here for flight director in fact there we go just had to recycle the switch flight directors on and then over here you've got uh, your temperature controls uh, we will put the Peter in fact we don't need it here it's nice and uh, nice and warm but we don't need any of that these are animated but obviously it's a computer we're not getting hotter or colder by uh, what's going on there. Nice little vibration effect, obviously with the uh, the slip ball there. And obviously being the uh, traditional six pack, it's very, very good as an instrument trainer or very good to learn uh, the skills of doing a scan on. So just mentioning the scan, basically what happens with the scan is that rather than just going and focusing on one instrument, a scan makes sure that you consistently and constantly check the performance and behavior and attitude of the aircraft. So. With a fully functioning panel, this would be your primary instrument, and then what you do is you look in various directions depending on your scan. Now, some people will do a scan like that, going around and around and around. I prefer to do the sort of radial scan, so this is your primary instrument. You look at your nav, then you look at your airspeed, then you look at your altitude, then you look at your nav, then airspeed, then altitude, and do that. Now, we're ready to go. One of the things I want to have a look at, really, is uh, the engine performance and also... Uh, we'll do an engine failure after takeoff, shortly after takeoff, but not uh, as we plummet off the end of the runway, 
just to see just how little climb this thing will have as a twin. Uh, and I think uh, it, it's quite surprising as to what if, what impact it's going to have. So let's take the uh, the, ham the parking brake off. Sorry, let's just nudge that up a little bit. So cow flaps both open, carb heats both off, all four forwards. Clear runway and off we go. And she'll accelerate quite briskly. It's not a problem, St. Bart's with a, a twin. We're looking for 70, 75 to uh, rotate. Airspeed to live, 60, 70, and rotate. And looking initially to climb out at 88, so gear up. And we're going to turn away from that big hill. Bit too fast. Let's level out there. Still too fast. At which point, bang, engine's gone. Ooh. Let's use our rudder to collect it. And we, we want to climb, we want to climb. So let's get 88 knots. Get the nose down. Then once we've got 88 knots, we're going to try and hold that with a pitch. And you'll notice we're not climbing. The best we can do is going to be to maintain our altitude. We'll see if we get anything at 82, which is best rate of climb speed. Uh, sorry, best angle of climb. Now we are getting something at 80, 82. So we'll take that. Rudder's way over to the right. In the real aircraft, this really does exercise your legs. Speed's dropping too much. Heading towards, uh, heading towards the stall there. But yeah. This is uh, not the greatest place to be, but we'll reintroduce the power, get ourselves more altitude. That horn, by the way, was the uh, gear warning horn. Now, one of the things I will uh, credit this aircraft with is it makes you use your feet. We don't want to cruise climb, we're going to try and get some altitude quite quickly. So, for example, if I level out without doing anything with my feet, slip balls out to the right if I put it back into the middle a little bit of a dance with the feet but when I then uh, roll into a turn you see the slip balls out to the left so it is actually quite an active slip ball which I like it forces you to uh, handle the aircraft correctly so get a bit of altitude uh, and then we'll have a, a further mess around with the engines I mean, I have to say that handling, she's really nice. Trim, she's an absolute pig because that's just how it seems to be with, um, well, with FS2020. Trying to get that balance where the trim's right is, is just a nightmare. It, it's overly sensitive for my liking. But uh, yeah, with 92, that'll do. I'm not gonna fail a flight exam because we're in our own little aircraft. Right, we'll climb up through these clouds and then we're going to have a bit of a, a, a mess around in terms of handling. In fact, what we can do is we can take the power off now, let the speed come back and we'll see what the uh, handling's like. And we'll see what she uh, handles like at slower speeds. No, we want the speed to come back at least down to about 70. And yeah, okay, so there we go. Controls are quite woolly. You can see that it's not particularly responsive. 45 to 45 is quite slow. Which is very nice, very realistic. Elevator is as we would expect. Again, the elevator is not affected by the prop wash. So the elevator is only really affected by how fast you're travelling through the air. Uh, whacking a load of prop wash on won't really make any difference. Which we'll, uh, we'll have a quick look at that. Yeah, it's made no difference to that. It's made no difference to that until we speed up. So, 
let's have, just have a quick look at the stabilities don't need to be revving it that hard it's uh, been a gotcha previously in aircraft multi-engine aircraft where they've uh, shut off the gear warning horn well singles as well where they've shut off the gear horn and forgotten that they've shut it off and then when they've come into uh, land they've landed with their gear up so it's one of those uh, gotchas that has happened in real world uh, flying quite frequently okay just steadying ourselves out what we'll do is we'll just bring you should always throttle back and rev up so when you're changing your engine settings uh, bring your power back before your pitch so we'll just go to in fact that's a mixture that's just about to kill us we'll do uh, 23 24 does do the sync noise quite good if you can hear they're out of sync that's back in sync if anything they just need a little nudge up to 24 and then we'll reintroduce some power to what would be our cruise speed it should be something like 23 24 so when I say 23 24 I mean 23 inches of manifold pressure and uh, that's at 22 so we'll just nudge them up a little bit more and then 24,000 rpm and this should give us quite a quick uh, quite a quick cruise just bouncing around a little bit in the weather what are we truing out out there this is a 75% power fast cruise I believe 140 just getting up oh, we're descending that's why we're increasing speed it's one of the disadvantages if you're in the real aircraft you can just glance really quickly but 140 level ourselves off and try and get this thing trimmed reset the view that might help okay stalls we'll do a clean stall first bring the power off shut the gear warning horn up let the speed come back just turn it into a little bit of height using a, the fact that we can climb keep the power off try and stop ourselves from losing altitude there's a stall warner let's see if she does anything more interesting than a mush oh yeah she's gone level the wings slowly pull out the dive introduce some power because what we're going to do now is we're going to do a power on stall so we need one stage of flaps we'll do an approach configuration so we're flying our approach we've not paid enough attention we've got a gear warning horn off and as we're doing our approach we've got too little power we're in our descent gradual descent just continually pulling back to maintain the rate of descent that we're planning for our ILS it's becoming harder and harder it's a bit weird that first warning of a stall which in this case is a stall warning remove the cause of the stall immediately apply full power and climb away with a positive rate of climb really very nice next thing we're going to have a look at is the uh, single engined behavior in terms of the minimum control speed so we'll bring back the left engine and what we'll do is make sure we've got gear up and flaps up got no gear lights on this so yeah gears up and we'll bring it back to the red line and see if we can maintain control right so we're starting to approach the red line quite quickly slow it down so we're reducing at about one knot per second don't want to be turning just get about a few couple of degrees into turn stall going but we're 
ignoring that. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep control whilst under the red line speed. And with this, unfortunately I can. There it goes. Power off. Roll wings level. And recover from the dive. <coughs> Reintroduce power smoothly. And uh, yeah, so the handling isn't quite there for me. Um, it stalls nicely for a clean stall. I do like that. Um, landing configuration, yeah, it, it's it's okay, but we're doing what we would normally do in terms of recovering at the first sign. Airfield's over there. And uh, yeah, for me, it, it's not quite nailed the minimum control in the air. The VMCA is not quite nailed that. It should be um, much harder to control it in the air and we should be able to uh, to actually keep it straight once we're below red line. So it's, it's a little bit of a shame with that. Um, they have kind of missed it a little bit with that. But, you know, such is life. Uh, these things happen. Now, as a result of that, I've got to be honest, I think the handling has a few areas where um, I would suggest that we don't need to be at, at cruising along at this rate. The engine's got a few things for me where it's not quite got it in terms of uh, the rate of climb, rate of descent, etc. Let me just have a look on here. Okay, so you join me as I uh, position for a, a landing into Barts, and you can see the biggest issue we've got is that visibility is not so hot. So Barts is somewhere down here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll try and avoid the sun glare. We want to come in sort of here and we want to fly with regards to these uh, these islands. We want to fly just between the islands and the mainland. So what we'll do is we'll come around is we want all the power in the world in case we have to have a go around. So props fully forward, car heat off, makes you fully rich. And we're going to come down here. And going to have to get the speed off for this. Now we want to be a little bit further to the left. Let's take the first stage of flap. I can't even see the airfield at this point, but I know it's down there. I think, judging by these two islands, we need to be slightly further to the right. Yeah, we need to be considerably to the right. I think, uh, I think if we just come over here. Yeah, right. So we need to come from where these two islands are and go over that, that coal, that dip in the landscape. There it is, just got it visual. Right, what we'll do is we'll centre ourselves, we can drop full flap. Gears down because we're not getting a, a gear warning light, but we'll just check visually as well. Gear down, three greens, red, blue. I'm going to keep the nose up, in fact I'll see if I can just scoop myself up a little bit, there we go. I want to try and see if I can see the numbers. Don't want to go below 70. Coming in, there's the numbers. I want to just get to the point where I can see all the numbers. Bring the power right off because we're going to accelerate going downhill like a tobogganist. Let's try and uh, dance around a little bit. Now, the aim here is to get it on the ground. Don't uh, mess around, because if it's not on the ground, you can't brake. 
Oh, it's not pretty, but it's there. It's worth having a look actually on YouTube. There's a Seneca that comes in for this approach, just floats and floats and floats, and it goes off into the water. Well, actually, it doesn't get to the water, it just uh, stops on the beach, just short of the water. Right, let's bring it to a halt there. We'll uh, just uh, pop the parking brake on and then we'll have a consideration about the aircraft. Okay, so outside, fabulous, absolutely love the 3D modelling, uh, the lighting, the texturing, the different materials, the use of uh, the fine detail, um, just really, really exquisite. Undercarriage, very well done. Uh, the, the dimples and the ri sort of um, ridges and whatnot on the uh, skins of the aircraft brilliant absolutely brilliant um, I, I can't I can't fault it literally it's one of those uh, exterior models where you can't fault it interior modeling is also very very good um, it's 3d modeling is brilliant uh, it's got a standard couple of things which are FS 2020 things so like the parking brake but overall the textures the the coloring the the 3d modeling the animations what you can have in terms of animations which at the moment are pretty much that and just the levers and switches very very good uh, the downside is the bugs so it's buggy with that and that and we've discussed that um, but I'm sure in time that will fix and if you just remember not to not to touch them um, you're all right but I think overall the interior for me is is really good as I say not steady level so circuit breakers don't quite work and the GPS uh, I don't believe uh, it's fully functional but it's got enough to get you going likewise the autopilot it does function uh, pretty much really well I mean some autopilots and some aircraft are absolutely diabolical but this one's actually okay it's not too bad at all uh, the lighting is glorious and the 3d panel in terms of instruments are glorious then we get to the final bit which is the uh, flight dynamics the flight dynamics for me are the the usual Carinado MS Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 runs on rails um, in terms of stability there's vague um, stability in terms of pitch strong very strong stability in terms of yaw um, and it, it's just neutral in roll which it should have uh, even mild positive stability with the dihedral of the wing uh, so for me you can put it into a bank and it will just fly around hands off not a problem runs on rails uh, which is not in my opinion true to life in terms of uh, low speed handling it's, it, it, it's wishy it's washy it's not really uh, it, it, there's not really much to comment on other than it you are obviously aware of some of the cues that you're flying slower increasing nose attitude uh, for example trying to maintain altitude uh, so it has some of the cues but obviously you don't have things like the slipstream noise uh, to the same extent as you would have in the real aircraft now obviously high speed uh, it handles uh, much more readily um, there's a little bit more snap to it um, but what we'll do is just also mention that the stall the uh, flaps up clean stall was actually quite good uh, it, it's a better stall than uh, the vast majority of aircraft we've seen in uh, uh, flight simulator in fact it's better stall behavior than all of the flight simulator 2020 aircraft we've seen um, one of the areas where it was uh, for me not so hot is the minimum control in the air so the the speed at which you can still maintain control uh, along a flight path with one engine dead um, it, it just it's not quite there it's quite easy to keep this thing straight using a judicious use of the rudder um, so this the single engine handling for me wasn't quite there uh, in terms of the asthmatic climb it is uh, but in terms of actual directional control below the minimum controlled airspeed it isn't and then finally really we came in and did an approach um, it flew it nicely as I say the only thing is it's Carinado handling so it tends to run on rails uh, it's not that lively uh, if that makes sense um, but yeah I mean overall uh, it's it's quite nice I enjoy flying it uh, it's very very good if you want to practice uh, doing some instruments obviously it's got the standard thing in that it hasn't got ADF dip um, so you won't encounter that if you're doing instrument flying uh, which is obviously something that real world uh, is present but overall I have to say I quite like the aircraft and uh, I hope you enjoyed the review guys if you did don't forget to tick like share and subscribe and uh, take care